Good afternoon, and my name is Delani, and let me share my story in the STEM field with you today. So my journey in STEM started in Sri Lanka way back in 2007 when I sat for the university entrance examination under the physical science stream or commonly known as the mathematics stream. So in 2008 when I had to decide on a university program, a transport and logistics management program was new in Sri Lanka. It had been introduced in 2006 and we weren't very sure where we would end up after doing this degree program, especially the terms like trans, uh, logistics and supply chain, they were very new to us. But transportation has always been a part of our daily lives. So as a very frequent public transport user, I have first-hand experience of the issues, uh, the discomforts and the inconvenience we face when we are using public transportation, especially uh, as a woman, the harassment and also the travel conditions like uh, because we don't have air conditioning in our public transport system. So it's so overcrowded and it's so uh, hot and sweaty. So because of these things, I felt that uh, uh, I was motivated to look into this degree program. And also, on the other hand, on the positive side, there are some uh, very beautiful transportation uh, segments uh, in, diff in some parts of our country. So I feel that all of these things uh, motivated me to embark on this journey to study transport and logistics management. So when I started a university, just like most of the others, I wanted to join the industry someday. But towards the end of the program, I felt that my parents were encouraging me to join the academic sector rather than joining the industry. So because of that, uh, I also felt that I might face some sort of a barriers and all based on my experience, uh, which may not really, uh, which didn't really make me comfortable to move into the industry. So with these things, uh, I decided to join the academic sector right after my graduation in 2013 and right until I uh, resigned to come to Australia in 2019, my entire uh, STEM related career has been as an academic. So that is the first phase uh, of my STEM career. And uh, when I came to Australia in 2019, uh, I was looking into different opportunities and then in 2020 I got the opportunity uh, to embark on a PhD on agri in agri-food supply chains. So before that I just like to uh, tell you what motivated me to move into this uh, into studying agri-food supply chains. So when I was at university in Sri Lanka uh, my view broadened to include freight transportation as well and I realized the vital role that freight transportation plays in moving a country forward and how it connects different parties within different industries such as the food industry. So when I came to Australia, when I came to Sydney first and when I saw uh, Sydney trains, I was like, I only one word to describe that. I thought that they're awesome. So we, we live quite close to a, a train station and then uh, from com coming from a country where, which we, where we don't have much freight, rail freight transportation, uh, when I saw the freight trains, I was uh, more motivated to study this uh, industry. And also I realized that uh, when I think about uh, freight transportation, so there are different industries in Australia uh, and transportation plays a major role in these industries. And food industry is one industry which actually caught my uh, interest, my passion. So because when I see this sort of a situation and the harvest, the, pro uh, the produce it is going waste and somebody uh, somewhere is actually going hungry. I thought that uh, the food industry combined with my passion for transportation and also uh, logistics supply chains uh, would help me to do something about these issues. So that is why when I saw the opportunity uh, advertised in the University of Tasmania website for a PhD opportunity in uh, agri-food supply chains, I thought, so why not? Because 
I can uh, focus on freight transportation as well as the uh, food supply chain itself. So in my uh, research, I'm actually looking into ways where we can improve the resilience of agri-food supply chains in terms of their preparedness, their responsiveness, uh, their recoverability and their growth so that we can have a better uh, food supply chain uh, connected by freight transportation right from the grower uh, right up to the uh, consumers. That's us. So I am not uh, limited to just issues uh, in freight transportation here, but my scope uh, is broadened to other different types of uh, disasters that agri-food supply chains face, such as droughts, bushfires, uh, and flood situations. So uh, when I look back on my career in STEM, I feel that uh, there were some um, barriers which actually discouraged me from moving into the industry. And uh, when I reflect on those things, uh, I would like to share with you some of my thoughts on them. So uh, I feel that the social and cultural context was not very supportive towards uh, moving uh, towards women to take up careers in the transport and storage sector and also the safety aspects combined with this. So for instance, uh, I felt that if I have to travel to uh, many different locations such as container yards and uh, shipping terminals, and also I have to travel at different times like at night times and I have to use public transportation. So this sort of situation may not be very safe. So especially if you take public transportation, like in uh, broad daylight, also there is harassment happening. So at night, it's not going to be safe. And also we don't have safety features like GPS or uh, CCTV camera systems in our uh, buses or trains. So because of this, I thought that it would not be very safe for me uh, to travel for my uh, work-related activities if I join the transport and uh, logistics sector. And also, uh, when I think about the uh, social and cultural aspects, I was thinking that uh, once I marry, uh, when I have children, and uh, what will my partner say if I have to go for uh, this sort of employment? Will he be supportive? And what about the, uh, the in-laws, my relatives? And what will society think of me? So this sort of a thoughts, uh, I feel that had a negative type of uh, influence on me. And uh, these actually motivated me into moving. Uh, or join in the academic sector. So uh, when I think about the safety aspects, uh, one thing that comes into my mind is that uh, right up to my uh, university uh, entrance examination classes, my mother, my parents would never uh, allow me to travel alone uh, in the buses. They would always come with me. And uh, it was only when I was going to university that I was allowed to go alone. And also when I was at university, if it gets dark, they will come to pick me up from the uh, bus halls. They, they didn't feel that it's safe for me to even walk alone just about like 800 meters home. So in this sort of a, a context, I feel that a lot of women in Sri Lanka are discouraged from joining the transport and logistics sector. And sometimes even if they join the sector, if they uh, start on an uh, industry-based career, most of the times once they marry and have children, some of, some of them entirely drop out of the uh, workforce or some of them uh, try to move more towards the uh, academic or sort of a um, banking sector, uh, something uh, that is related to these sites. So some barriers I have not be I have been fortunate enough not to face them because my parents have been able to give me a, uh, have been able to afford a good education for me in the STEM field. But there are uh, situations which I have heard through my friends and my uh, family where the girls are not uh, able to pursue uh, subjects which are related to STEM because most of the students who uh, undertake subjects in STEM, they go for additional tuition classes as well. So because of uh, the parents being unable to afford this sort of additional uh, tuition fees, uh, the girls and the parents, they're motivated towards them uh, undertaking subjects which are 
uh, manageable without this sort of uh, additional tuition classes. And also, uh, on top of this sort of situation, especially in schools which are mostly away from the uh, main cities towards the regional areas, the schools also uh, lack educational resources. So they don't have the proper textbooks or the past paper books or the model paper books for the students to study. And uh, because of this, the situation, uh, if they do come from a uh, family which has a difficult financial situation. This combined with the lack of resources in the schools will uh, definitely demotivate uh, the girls from pursuing uh, subjects which are related to STEM and later on uh, careers which are related to STEM as well. So because of that, um, through the funding opportunity that I got, I decided that uh, I will try to do something. I will try to contribute towards these two issues combined together. So because of that, I thought uh, the best thing that I can do is to uh, give them books which they need towards uh, the STEM education of these girls, so especially related to the uh, STEM related uh, subjects. So I got in touch with the principals and the teachers of several schools. Uh, this was facilitated by the Wing Sri Lanka Foundation in Sri Lanka. So through them, I contacted the principals and uh, teachers and got the uh, requested the books that they need for these students. So uh, they have actually uh, requested certain textbooks as well as uh, past paper and model paper books as well. So I feel that the girls will feel uh, more motivated and they will feel that they are supported uh, to undertake subjects which are related to STEM and I, uh, I hope that uh, through this uh, they feel that they have the knowledge and they have the skills, they have the ability uh, to, to pursue careers in STEM. I hope that they have uh, the confidence to move towards uh, careers in STEM. And another reason why I selected the, uh, the books is because it is a resource which can be used by several students within the same year and also they can be passed on to several other badges of students uh, in the years to come as well. So while thanking for this opportunity and uh, for your contribution towards uh, this sort of project, I would like to leave you with a story. I think it's a very famous story. So uh, we don't have to change the whole world or we may not be able to change the whole world, but if we can make a difference in one person's life, in one living being's life, uh, that is also a great thing. So I try to apply it uh, in my personal life uh, as much as possible. So thank you very much for this opportunity and thank you. Uh, all of us together, I believe we make a change in uh, at least a few girls in this world. Thank you.